79% of Cambodia's 16.5 million people live in rural areas, with most engaging in farming. Cambodia is also home to approximately 1.5 million people with disability. Due to landmine injuries, age, road traffic crashes, congenital conditions, and malnutrition as a result of the Khmer Rouge era. People with disability in Cambodia fall within the lowest 20% of income earners and have less than 22 US dollars disposable income per month. And therefore they rely heavily on subsistence farming and support from the community and local disability NGOs. The traditional ways of undertaking farming are labor intensive and can usually be done by younger community members. However, large numbers of youth are opting out of farm work in favor of factory work and moving to, to larger townships nearby. This exodus has created a labor shortage in rural areas and has resulted in people with disability, particularly elderly individuals, having to undertake these tasks themselves or rent their land out to other families and receive a fraction of what they could receive if they sold their produce in the market directly. From working with local disability organizations and communities of people with disability, we know that these individuals are innovative and motivated, and they want to solve their own problems. However, to date, there has not been an opportunity to provide materials, tools, and technical support to allow these individuals to practice innovative problem solving. This is where the AgriLab comes in. This is a project that aims to work together with communities of people with disability in rural areas of Cambodia, and in particular in Porsat province. In collaboration with Light for the World, Engineers Without Borders Australia has worked with 60 people across two farming communities in the Porsat province. In over 12 months, this project aimed to improve the ability of people with disability to access agricultural livelihoods through creating assistive technologies so that these people can pursue the farming that they choose. And this is what we did. We applied a co-design of participatory process that incorporated four workshops, design iterations and prototyping, and working together with a community of people with disability to develop a range of appropriate technology solutions. Along with this, through co-design, we also built the capacity of these individuals within the community to practice independent problem solving in the future, whether that be identifying problems that require further support, refining technologies that already exist in their communities, or creating brand new solutions from start to finish. This workshop involved organizations from around Cambodia and Indonesia, and really focused on building the confidence and understanding of the facilitation group to implement the AgriLab. The workshop focused on knowledge sharing around how best to collaborate and work with people with disability, as well as building an understanding of the importance of creating rural livelihoods for people with disability in rural areas. This was a fun workshop that involved a lot of knowledge sharing, a lot of practice of what co-design actually is, and a lot of games trying to build creative confidence in the facilitation group, while also showing exactly the kind of work that needs to be undertaken with community in order to have effective co-design projects. Now this workshop really aimed to be an introduction into what the design process is and how we use it through the project work that we do. To build this understanding, fun activities were used like the banana boost. Each team is given a bunch of bananas, one sheet of paper, and needs to brainstorm ways of lifting the bananas off the ground by 10 centimetres using just one piece of paper. We also commenced discussion about specific community challenges. These included a range of mobility challenges, such as collecting and transporting goods, field preparation, weeding, harvesting, as well as social challenges, such as discrimination when selling produce in the market, or a lack of access to market information when actually trying to set prices each day. And after a three week break, workshop two was undertaken, the pre-design workshop. So this focused on learning more about community life, understanding the challenges in more detail, 
and facilitating the participants to discuss, prioritise and select the specific challenges they'd like to work on. From this discussion, two project briefs emerged. Firstly, how might we improve the accessibility of transportation of heavy agricultural products between home and the farm for people with mobility impairment? And secondly, how might we improve the accessibility of water collection and transport from source to farm for people with disability? And these two project briefs became the basis for all future design, prototyping and testing. In workshop three, we used these project briefs and applied our creativity to come up with a range of ideas. To support this, we used tools such as brainstorming, but also reviewing and improving on existing solutions from around the world. We also spent time in community farms, learning more about exactly what they do step by step to support agricultural livelihoods. We started to test these ideas through rough prototypes and experimentation. And through this hands-on learning, we agreed upon the specific designs that we should continue with. One of these designs is an electric drive unit, what we call the power assist module, the PAN. Now this is a combination of an electric motor, battery, handlebars and throttle that can connect to existing wooden carts and help to make them easier to push or even ride on for people with mobility impairments. Secondly, an all-in-one cart that includes storage for water, around 120 litres, and a multi-directional manual or electric pump that can help pump the water from the source into the storage and then from the storage into house or farm or, or additional storage, wherever is needed. The engineering team then went and focused on refining and improving these designs a bit further, really focusing on functionality, safety and durability. We took these new functional designs and created several prototypes that would undergo medium term testing. We aim then to support these community members to refine and improve the designs further as we look to create sustainable, scalable solutions. Along with this, implementation plans were developed with each of the groups, focused on one, three and six month milestones. And through this process, we landed on two different detailed designs. Firstly, the vertical power assist module, the VPAN. So this is a refinement of the previous electric motor unit that now connects directly to a standard bicycle. And that bicycle is then used to connect to any cart that is needed. Now this process of having the bicycle acting as the connection allows for very easy local manufacture and durability in the steering mechanism. It's really designed for short distances, one or two kilometers up to maybe 10 kilometers. And that really allows for transport of goods between house and farm or around the house or around the farm. We currently have one unit in testing with one of our lead participants, Mr. Young. Along with this, we have the water pump cart. Now this is a very low cost, 40 US dollar cart that allows for water collection and challenging terrain. It has a manual pump attached to it. That means the user does not have to walk down a muddy bank or across unstable ground to reach the water source and can instead use some kind of hose or tubing and the manual pump. This pump also acts as a great way of pumping out from the storage tanks into the final destination for the water, whether that's for irrigation, whether that's storage around the house or something else. We have five of these units now in testing with five different households and we're also exploring whether some kind of electric assist would be useful for the motor or for some kind of walking power assist. And that'll be part of our plan going forward. From here, we'll work with our partner community to test, fix and refine the prototypes and work with our network of engineering volunteers, as well as the staff at EWV and Light for the World to develop final robust technologies. These new designs will then be fabricated locally in Porsac and placed into longer term testing with our partner communities and closely monitored for reliability and effectiveness. Finally, alongside of the technical work, a sustainable implementation model is being developed that builds upon our partner organization, DDSP's existing training center based in Porsac. And this system will utilize local manufacture, maintenance and disposal. And there's a lot of work left ahead of the design team but the foundation laid through the AgriLab project is robust, community-centred, inclusive, 
and ready for future support and impact.